The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. Thank you very much, Shiraz. I'm just going to go quickly through here the role of Federal Highway Administration in this process has been taking place actually now since Shiraz mentioned the early 2000s. Again, the reasons that we're using precast concrete pavement basically boil down to two main categories, maintenance of traffic and long life performance. Precast units that come from precast plants typically are much higher strength actually than we need in the pavement which is usually about 4,000 PSI is what we need. Generally, we're getting five, 6,000, even higher, because as you're probably aware, precast plants are turning their forms over on a daily basis. So we're getting much higher quality concrete than we actually would get with cast-in-place concrete. And maintenance of traffic basically is related to, as Sherrod said, to the fact that particularly in metropolitan areas, but throughout the U.S., we've got areas that just cannot be shut down for long periods of time. And typically, the only time to really get low traffic is at period between like 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. in the morning. That's when most of these jobs are taking place. Not every job. Precast can be used in other settings as well. But these are the warrants that say, hey, this is probably where you need to use precast concrete pavement. He addressed the long life that we're looking for. Basically, we're addressing the input from state DOTs in conferences that we held in 2006, 2012. And basically, they're looking for 40-plus years of performance, okay? And again, high-quality concrete, smooth surface, so forth. Shiraz mentioned the report. Actually, he and another engineer authored, were primary authors on that report that he mentioned, the 2013 report from Strategic Highway Research Program that provided all these guidelines on fabrication, project selection, system acceptance, and so forth, performance of the projects that were then in place from 2001 through about 2012 when the study was completed. And of course, model specifications, which we have more and more of from states as they implement this technology that we can pass along to other states to get them started on this process. So that's a very important aspect of what we're doing. Just looking at a map of the U.S. and the states that began to use precast concrete <laughs> pavement, as Shiraz said, some earlier than 2000, but around 2001 through 2015 is the real history that we have of modern use of precast concrete pavement and precast concrete and highway applications. And these 20 states represent states that have used it, I'll have to say, at least once, two, three, four times but the states with a star are using it on a regular basis. Steve Gillen was one of our speakers, and I still haven't corrected my slide to include Illinois or Illinois Tollway, which is where Steve is from. So you're going to hear from Steve later on in this two-part session, but these are the states. More recently, in 2014 and 2015, the Federal Highway Administration with SHARP II, we were able to award relatively small but still significant funding awards to the states shown here in 2014, four states and eight states in 2015 to actually design and construct concrete pavements or rehabilitate concrete pavements, I should say, using precast units. This is just an example of a post-tension project that was constructed in 2009. All the projects I'm going to show you, in fact, I think all the projects that have been completed actually are doing very well currently. This is a 2009 project on precast concrete pavement in Delaware. The project was done at night. Actually, you didn't see this exact slide, but Shiraz showed you this project on I-66 in Virginia, also done in 2009. The outside ramp on this two-lane ramp, 3,900-foot ramp, was done over a series of night closures with precast units. It's a jointed pavement. 
This is a project actually that just started last week. I'll show you on the next slide the current construction, but this project is a T intersection in Texas. It's about an hour, hour and a half south of San Antonio, so it, it seems to be like a remote area. But this particular project gets extremely heavy loading from what they call the energy sector, very heavily loaded, actually overloaded in many cases, trucks using this on a daily basis, a lot of stopping and starting, turning motions that were chewing up this intersection and causing the need for repeated repairs. And when I say repeated repairs from a highway agency, if it's done every year, that's frequent repair. As Shiraz said, we're looking for 40-year life in most states. So this was a troublesome intersection. It's being replaced now with precast units. My understanding is, and you correct me if I'm wrong, this is being done on extended weekend closures because that's a period of time in this particular case where the traffic is not heavy. This is a job that we actually had an open house event two weeks ago in Leavenworth, Kansas, just outside of Fort Leavenworth. The first and second circle on your slide are at intersections that go into Fort Leavenworth. A very critical job, not necessarily because of extremely high traffic, but you can't really shut down the entrance to a major military facility. So this was an important job, again, done at night. The circle on the right, as you can see, it's adjacent to the Missouri River. It represents precast panels that were used to replace the approach slabs at that bridge. And again, a detour at that point would be, as I understand it, 20 or 30 miles. So it has to be done in a short period of time. Can't be an extended closure. This is a job that's underway right now. It's being designed. It hasn't been let yet in Alabama. Shiraz showed a slide of this long ramp leading down to a left turn movement that's made by heavily loaded trucks that are accessing the port of Mobile. So a lot of heavy truck traffic here as well. And this is an urban intersection. It's been awarded, I believe. I'm not sure it's been constructed yet, but it's an urban intersection in a downtown area in Norristown, Pennsylvania. So there are just a whole range of examples of uses of precast concrete pavement in high traffic or restricted closure areas where precast concrete pavement becomes a viable and desirable solution. This is an access ramp in Louisiana DOT. Their intention is for this project to serve. It's been designed, and I think it's to be constructed maybe in September of this year. Yes. And their intention is for this to serve as a pilot project for their use of precast concrete pavement, the development of specifications, some history of use and expertise with local contractors and precasters. And what they intend to do is move it right on to Interstate 20 which is right there where they've got some serious repair and rehabilitation needs. They intend to extend the use of this technology pretty significantly in Louisiana, not only on I-20, but a lot of other routes as well. And this is just an example of a relatively small job, but this is on H1 in Hawaii. And you can see it's being done, or at least the exit lane and outside lane are being done in daytime closure. But if you look at the traffic, this is just a good example of the kind of traffic we're talking about. No surprise to any of you, I'm sure, about traffic like this on typical roads throughout the United States. But this was a particular area that had a subsurface a failure of subgrade and it had been filled with asphalt numerous times, I don't know, 10 or 12, 14 inches of asphalt over a period of 10 years or more. And so basically they were using the precast across all five lanes to solve this particular problem. And this is the Virginia job that Shiraz mentioned. The westbound lanes, which are shown on the right with the yellow arrow there, about 1,100 feet of pavement was replaced for the three lanes, including the rightmost lane, which is actually a rush hour lane. It's not used during the day. Well, actually it is. If you go there, you'll see people using it, but they're not supposed to. But it's a four-lane road, all of which was done with precast, pre-stressed concrete pavement post-tension. So... This is an example of a post-tension job that was done in 2009. And if you look at our website, I'm not going to read through these. You'll have them in the slides that are available to you from ACI later. But this is a sample of online publications that we have that you can download for free, of course. And there will be more technical briefs and examples of projects, case studies of each of the projects that are being done throughout the United States. All this information will eventually be available to you on our website.